With Assassin's Creed Ragnarok being just a few months away from announcement now and the hype building, I thought I'd talk about a few of my concerns for the game. By no means do I expect Ragnarok to be bad, it's been made by the Origins team after all, I just have a few things that worry me a bit. So without further ado, let's get into it. Now, one of the main things that I don't want in Ragnarok is a choice of dialogue and or characters like we got in Odyssey. While this works in some games like Mass Effect, in my opinion, they just don't work in Assassin's Creed. Not only do they not fit in terms of the lore, they also just don't work with Assassin's Creed in terms of story and themes. For me, the series has always worked best when it's been streamlined. Not necessarily linear like the earlier games in the series, but when the story has a clear direction and everything ties together nicely, which can work with a choice-based game, but not Assassin's Creed, and the same goes for character choices. Imagine if Bayek or Ezio were made into two characters of different genders with dialogue options. Their stories would become far less focused and as a result less enjoyable. The reason this is a worry for me is because Odyssey sold very well, and the Ubisoft higher ups may well want to continue using that formula. I really don't mind whether the character is female or male, I just hope that it's one character so that character can be focused on and made great. Dialogue options, and especially gender, have both been mentioned in a lot of leaks we've seen for the game, although none of these are particularly reliable. I think that Ragnarok began development well before Odyssey's release back in 2017, or maybe early 2018, so Ubisoft would have no way to react to that game's success before the game started to develop, although they may have been able to implement dialogue choices, character options, after the game already started to develop, but we really don't know. As I say, all of these are just concerns. Nothing proven, nothing that's fact, just concerns. So be a little skeptical with all of these following. Well, some of you probably agreed with the last point, and some of you Odyssey fans might not have agreed with it. I feel like something we can all agree on is the dislike of Ubisoft's microtransactions. This is a huge concern for me, because unlike things like story, world, actual content of the game, this is completely down to the choices of the Ubisoft higher-ups, and Helix credits have tainted the series for years, but have seemingly gotten worse. In Origins, the microtransactions were clearly there as a way of being a shortcut and getting levelled up high enough to be able to take on the next main memory, taking advantage of the new RPG formula in Origins. The XP was fairly abundant though, so it really felt like a slug levelling up, whereas in Odyssey, it did. This isn't me just insulting Odyssey's side content either. The XP you got in that game was slowed down dramatically to make you buy these Helix packages, some of which cost over $100. It's not only anti-consumer and generally a bit scummy, but in the case of Odyssey, it made the game worse. I'm not blaming the guys at Quebec and Montreal 3 for this, because of course it's not their fault, that just wouldn't be fair. However, I am blaming the executives and higher-ups at Ubisoft, and it wouldn't shock me if microtransactions were in Ragnarok, maybe to the same extent as Odyssey, or maybe even worse. Hopefully not though. Now as much as I love Ubisoft Montreal 3, the Origins team for their games, it's never exactly been for their modern days. The games they've made are Revelations, Black Flag and Origins. The mundane Revelations was good, I'd say, they definitely had good groundwork to go on, Black Flags was admittedly a bit bad, and Origins was kind of mediocre in its modern day. Now two of those Mondays were made from scrap effectively, but that's not to say that Montreal couldn't make a great Monday from the ground up, or just continuing what was left before. Darby is a great writer, but it always felt like the Monday is sidelined, but it's felt like that for years now, not just in Montreal's games. After Odyssey's DLC though, you'd think the Monday would maybe have a bit more importance. With Layla seemingly turning evil I suppose, and a paralyzed Otto Berg being left alive, as well as William Miles just presumably being sat in that same chair for the last three years, there is just a lot of ways I can go with the Monday being as open as it is right now. I actually made a theory video on what I think might happen in Ragnarok's Monday that I'll link on a card now, but for now all we can do is speculate. Now, one of the main things that concerns me for Ragnarok is the parkour and the free running, and that's for a few reasons. I've seen some people say that Scandinavia just flat out doesn't work for parkour, which I definitely disagree with. There's plenty of castles, cliff sides, forests, that kind of thing that Montreal can adapt, and I don't see them fully removing parkour. Like I've seen some people say that's just insane. My worry comes with the control of the parkour itself. The way I've seen people describe the parkour that was in Origins and Odyssey is being vertical. Coming from how the parkour in those games is based far more on moving upwards and climbing as opposed to general free running and moving forward. Another thing is that pretty much everything is climbable now. If you start trying to climb a cliffside or a tower, usually all you have to do is hold up the analog stick or holding X or A. I miss in the older games when scaling something was not so much of a challenge, but you actually had to consider how you'd go about it. 
and when you can climb anything, that feeling of satisfaction isn't really there, and parkour just begins to feel like a chore. As I say, it was never so much a challenge before trying to climb things, but it was always satisfying to kind of figure out how you do it, trying different ways of climbing certain towers or buildings, and it always gave you this feeling of satisfaction once you've climbed a certain viewpoint or high tower that you just don't get anymore. Odyssey also made the choice to just completely cut out fall damage at a point, which just removed any consequence from the parkour, but this is something that's so silly that I'm certain it won't be in Ragnarok, so I'm not including it on this list. So the content in Assassin's Creed has always fluctuated in quality since the very beginning of the series, and it's no different now. Origins had some great side missions, tombs, stargazing missions, among just a few repetitive side activities and some boring side quests. Generally though, the side content was okay. It could have been better if those repetitive bases and animal layers were changed, but still, it was fine. Odyssey, on the other hand, fully embraced the weaker half of Origins side content and was filled with those same bases and animal layers with even worse side missions. I think the side content of Ragnarok will at least be better than Odyssey, and I really hope it's an improvement on Origins. Hopefully adding more side missions of substance, whether they be connected to the main story or their own stories, as well as better side activities to densify the world. There can be glyphs, assassin recruitment missions, naval missions, there's a lot of options for Montreal 3, and I really hope they capitalise on them. So anyway, those are just a few of my concerns for Assassin's Creed Ragnarok. There are other things missing from the list that I didn't include that were in Odyssey. I didn't include these because I already made a video dedicated to that which I'll link on a card now. The things in this video are concerns that seem more plausible and things more likely to happen rather than things that were just in Odyssey that I don't want to happen. Just to clarify as well, this video wasn't made to be negative, just to talk about a few of my concerns for the game as of now at least, and these could all easily turn around after the game's announced anyway. Despite the issues I brought up in this video, I have complete faith in Montreal 3 to deliver as they always do. At the very worst, I still think the game's going to be good, but that's just what I think. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.